If you bought a new home in Ontario in the past 40 plus years, a newly built home that is, it likely came with warranty protection from the Tarion Warranty Corporation. It is sometimes the last hope for consumers locked in disputes with developers and home builders. But Tarion itself is not without its critics, and earlier this year, Ontario's Auditor General, Bonnie Lissick, took a look and she joins us now on what she found out. Nice to have you back here. Thank you for inviting me. I don't want to assume that everybody knows what Tarion is or has heard of it because frankly, if you, if you haven't bought a new home, uh, there's no reason why you would know what it is. So why don't we start there? What is Tarion? Tarion is a not-for-profit organization, uh, no share capital. It is um, an organization that was set up as a delegated authority by the government in around 1976. The responsibility for sort of consumer protection was delegated to this organization. The organization's board was mainly composed of uh, representatives from the Ontario um, House Builders Association, as well as others. And its purpose was to license builders in the province of Ontario, home builders, and also uh, collect fees from builders that would be collected from people that are building new homes to uh, fund its operation. And this is, just to be clear, not a government agency, right? The government doesn't run it. No, the government has delegated authority to the organization to do those two things. So they are watching, essentially, they're watching themselves. They're regulating themselves. They were supposed to be the backstop uh, for the builder's warranties. So they were supposed to be the organization that provided consumer protection. So if you're building a new home or a condominium, you're buying a condominium, they would, if your builder didn't fix what you needed them to fix, then um, Tarion would step in and uh, either encourage the builder to do so or be the backstop financially for you. And let's just understand what kinds of complaints typically Tarion deals with. I can mm -hmm. imagine if you've bought a new condo, let's say. Mm -hmm. Covers condos too, right? Not, not just houses? Correct. Right. So you've got a condo and wait a second, I thought there was going to be a wall there. There's no wall there. Uh, you know, it, it's on the floor plan. There's supposed to be a wall there. You can go to Tarion for that? Well, you would first go to your builder, and I think that's the misconception. So the warranty is with the builder. Tarion puts out what the rules are for warranty. So in Ontario, there's seven years of warranty attached to a home. And when you have something like that happen, you go first to your builder. If you don't get satisfaction from your builder, then you can approach Tarion. Part of what we saw was the problem was the process that Tarion has in place to be that second help for you. Um, it was very difficult, a difficult process to get help from Tarion if you're looking for help with the issues that come up in the first year that you've moved into your house. Why did you decide to audit Tarion in the first place? There was a motion at the Standing Committee on Public Accounts in around March 2018 that asked us to do this audit. Because uh, they're not a government agency and therefore, theoretically, I guess, in the past, they'd be beyond your purview. That's right. We had no jurisdiction. Having said that, uh, we did do audits of the ministry that is supposed to oversee them uh, in around 2003 and 2010. And we, in those two cases, did point out that we had some concerns with Tarion. Um, there were changes made, but they didn't go far enough. Hmm. Okay. Here's your report, right? That's, That's correct. That's it. That's it. Special audit of the Tarion Warranty Corporation. Uh, it came out just a matter of weeks ago, and uh, let's get through some of the highlights here, okay? okay? Here we go. Uh, Tarion was found in more than half of its inspections that the builders had not honored their warranties. This is one of the things you found. Tarion dismissed thousands of requests for help from homeowners because the homeowners missed Tarion's, in your view, tight deadlines. Builders with poor warranty records continued to get licenses from Tarion. You point out that builders were subsequently licensed by Tarion even when homeowners alleged that they acted dishonestly and broke the law. Tarion's call center did not always provide accurate and helpful information. And one more highlight here, Tarion's senior management was rewarded financially for increasing profits and minimizing financial aid paid to homeowners. Okay, let's pick some of these apart here. Uh, in your view, I mean, you, you audit... Uh, endless numbers of ministries and departments in the government of Ontario and beyond and the broader public mm -hmm. sector. So I want to get a sense about how serious you find these allegations to be. How, how would you characterize them? Uh, no, I, I think uh, we were surprised with what we saw. I think we did characterize them as serious. I think we think the process um, was a process that operated more in favor of the builders in terms of how to get help in your first year of warranty deficiencies. So, um, and we did see issues around that as well as the licensing of builders. Hmm. This notion that Tarion's senior management 
was in some way incentivized, meaning they themselves would make more money if they were able to save more money. What did you find regarding that? Uh, we just thought, I mean, this is a not-for-profit organization that's supposed to be a backstop consumer protection. Um, if people need help on their uh, getting their uh, place fixed as a result of a builder not honoring their warranty, we were surprised to see that uh, compensation was tied to minimizing um, expenses, so claims as an, as an example. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and yeah, we were surprised that that type of compensation existed in an organization of this nature. Okay, you're surprised, but are you in a position to say to them, these incentives are perverse and you ought to end them? We did recommend in our report, we highlighted this, we recommended in the report that um, they look at changing that. Uh, they agreed to it. I mean, I should say from the beginning, um, they were very cooperative with us and we did give them 32 recommendations uh, between them and the ministry. and. Uh, we've received um, assurance that they're going to be implementing the recommendations along with monitoring I know. By the I've read this over and over and over <laughs> in the book. Terry and accepts the recommendation and will work to implement an appeal. Terry and accepts the recommendation and will work mm -hmm. with the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services. Terry and accepts the recommendation and will develop clearer guidelines. Terry and accepts the recommendation and will adopt a more comprehensive... Anyway, um, virtually every recommendation you've made, they accept and they say, we're going to do better in the future. Uh, why should we believe that? You know, I think the... When we looked at Tarion's operation, I mean, the majority of people that have approached Tarion and worked through the process have, have actually received assistance, okay? It's the few, the 9,700 people um, over the last five years that, um, you know, filed help within a 30-day period and uh, didn't receive it at the end of the day. So um, what I'm saying is in, you had two 30-day periods that you could ask in the first year, Tarion, for help. Mm -hmm. 97 people missed the first 30-day deadline, so they don't get any help. They have to wait to the last 30 days in the first year, and then they apply. About 3,100 people missed that second date and absolutely got no help from Tarion. So that's where we see a problem. We also see a problem in the process. Sorry, let me just stop you there. Where mm -hmm. do, you, do you want them to extend the deadlines then? We're saying eliminate, we're recommending they eliminate those 30-day periods because what it's saying is if you move into your place and your builder's not fixing anything, you only have the first 30 days of the time from occupancy for 30 days mm -hmm. to file a complaint with Tarion. Then you have to wait for the last 30 days of the year to ask for help on those first year warranty items. And if you miss those two deadlines, you'll get no help from Tarion if the builder isn't honoring their warranty. As well, once you approach Tarion, you, you'll, they'll say, we need 120 days to give the builder to help you, time, more time. So you're still waiting, and then after that 120 days, you have to, you have to again apply for help from Tarion. And if you don't, you miss it. And there's 800 people there that miss that second 30-day. So deadline. what are their prospects now, those 800? They would have no recourse on their first year of warranty items. They're out of luck. They're out of luck. And so that process for the first year warranties is where we think the problem was and where we think, um, you know, it's the reason why people um, have complained about Tarion. Um, warranty claims that come in that deal with more serious issues um, typically have followed the same process after the first year. So they have um, a 90 day period for the builder to fix it. And then there's other, other checks. Those ones typically we're seeing get fixed. Um, but, but there are cases, obviously, where people have had concerns even at that point. Mm -hmm. But generally, we've seen things um, working uh, fairly well. Um, so we do think that uh, my team was working very closely with Terry and I've met with the board management. We think they're sincere in making changes, but we do think that's conditional, like their operation is conditional on very, very tightly monitored um, the government monitoring them very tightly. Who's mm -hmm. going to do that, the monitoring? The min well, I guess we recommend in the report that the ministry needs to make sure that the board is set up right, the composition is right, the intent of the board and the culture of the organization are correct, and that they're reporting back into the ministry um, things they're doing under the recommendations that we've made, as well as others, that will improve their operation to benefit. Um, new home buyers in Ontario. I should tell you, and I'm, I'm not advocating this, mm -hmm. I'm just passing this information along, I should tell you that th that there is a, um, I guess a consumer watchdog organization that has been emailing me mm -hmm. probably for years, I think it's been years now, and frequently, not every day, but frequently, saying that this organization 
is is really um, it's lost at sea, and they should just end it, start again, create something new, and start from fresh. Do you advise that course? I think what we saw, and I'm familiar with the organization. In fact, my team, you know, um, talked to them. We got, we received information from them. Um, there's one aspect. Tarion is totally funded by the amount that uh, new home buyers pay, and that's between about 300 to about 1800 when their house is being built uh, through their builder or through the licensing of builders. So their revenues are coming from that industry, the building industry as well as a home buyer. Taxpayers don't pay for their operation at, at, at any point. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of value for money, taxpayers, I know that question was raised by that organization, taxpayers would be okay from a value for money perspective. There's no government money going in there. Having said that, the, that organization still needs to prove itself going forward that they will be there to protect consumers. But I think uh, we think they deserve a chance because the systems are all there, they're, they're staffed, and we think if they implement these recommendations, it'll go a long way to uh, resolving uh, a number of the issues that have been raised over the last many years. The shortest word in that last sentence you said is the most important word in the whole conversation, which is if. If they implement these mm -hmm. recommendations, mm -hmm. what you know guarantees do we have that they will? Well, the other it, it's like any organization. We don't see you know we audit a lot of places and we don't see everything as being perfect. So there are always going to be bumps in the road around um, you know any operation. I think the alternative is, and you know I think the government's looking at having a separate regulator and a separate operator, and also looking at whether private insurers will work. In our report, we have a whole section that looks at the pros and cons of those different models. Um, in terms of the private insurers model, uh, British Columbia has that, but they still do, and the UK, they still do experience problems in, even in a different model. Let me go through some of the problems here mm -hmm. that you found, and, and the, I mean, here's an easy, mm -hmm. you would think this is an easy fix. Terrian's call center did not always provide accurate and helpful information. If you're a new home buyer, and you call them and they give you the wrong information and therefore you don't pursue something that maybe you ought to pursue or you pursue it in a different way that therefore doesn't help you, uh, you know, you're up the creek without a paddle. How do they mm -hmm. fix that? Uh, well, we said they need to train their staff that are answering the phone. Uh, we sampled some of the phone calls and listened to them and realized that some of the people that were giving advice to the callers um, didn't have a, a complete understanding of the issue. So, for instance, um, they might get a lot of building code, Ontario building code questions, and they need to be trained. So, more training. More training. Why would Tarion be licensing, subsequently licen licensing home builders which have already proven to have acted dishonestly or even broken the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were surprised at that as well. I think what we found is that um, they do not have a code of conduct that when they receive complaints from people that they were assessing whether those builders actually breached the code of conduct. And so that is the reason they found it difficult. Having said that, I mean, I think we think that's easy to fix. Put in a builder code of conduct and adhere to it. And if a builder isn't meeting that code of conduct, then put that information on the registry so that people who are selecting who to buy from or who to have their homes built by um, will know. I presume one of the difficulties here is that there are just tens of thousands of people moving into, well, I, you know, if, you, if you're talking about the greater Toronto area, you, you're talking about a, more than 100,000 people moving into this area every year, and they need somewhere to live. Mm -hmm. And home builders are trying like heck to keep up with the demand. So this is, um, this is a problem, right? This is an issue. Is Terry able to even keep up with the demand that would be made for their services and for the services of the home building industry? Uh, yeah, we didn't see, um, I mean, there's, there's a, one area where they weren't being very timely in terms of conducting their own inspections, but there's about 60,000 homes being built in Ontario every year. Um, you know, just in 2018, I think the condo builds, uh, units built surpassed that. And uh, so if the issues are dealt with by the builders, who are the ones that are supposed to be honoring their warranty, the volume won't make much of a difference if they're doing their job. Uh, then Tarion just needs to pick, up, pick it up on the inspection of the problems that they hear about or that they get put on their plate um, when the builder's not honoring the warranty. I don't know whether you investigated this, so not sure you can answer it, but 
but did you come away with any sense about how well home builders themselves were resolving problems with purchasers without even Terry and having to be involved? Yeah, there's um, Terry and so 60,000 was the build each year in Ontario for a number of years. Um, Terry and would get about 300,000 requests to uh, that identified there were issues on homes in the first year warranty. Of those, um, it, that narrowed down to about 6,000 that they actually were dealing with over, over a, um, uh, well, I guess 6,000, I have my data here. Um, so they got about 300,000 over five years and about 6,400 that they actually had to deal with. So the ones in between there, so the 300,000 were either resolved between the builder and the um, homeowner, or in some cases, like we've pointed out, homeowners who needed Tarion's help, and that's a lower number, mm -hmm. didn't get it, or you know they got frustrated and they didn't even um, um, make the count that we have here. But if I get your math here, it, it would only be about 10, is it 10% of the complaints 10% of the homes that would be complained about, the rest of them are doing fine? Um, they would get, they would do assessments on about, I would say, 1%. 1%. So it's not, this is why I said, you know, said the, the majority of people that have uh, dealings with the builders are getting their work resolved without going and requesting help from Tarion. But the process for those who need help uh, from Tarion um, is a difficult process and that's why you know you hear people being vocal because their own experiences um, have been have been significant to okay. them. Okay, so because that's an important mm -hmm. distinction I guess. I mean for, for yes. those who need Tarion's help you've written a report that that exposes some of the problems. Yes. But let's not give the impression here that the vast majority of people are having difficulties with the new homes that they buy because that doesn't appear to be the case. That doesn't appear, it, I mean again, the warranty is with the builder. Mm -hmm. So as long as the builder deals with the issues that are brought up in the first year, um, you know, and, and the numbers show that that's been working okay, um, that's key. But having said that, when you need, you needed the help of Terry in, their processes were not easy for people to work through to get that help. How much time just finally do you give them to get their act together before you knock on their door again? We'll be back there in two years. Um, we're hoping that we might get an update in a year as to how they're moving and progressing. That's what was, you know, verbally um, given, we were given verbal assurance that we'd meet again and talk about the progress. And then we'll follow up with the government to see how the ministry is uh, addressing it as well. Gotcha. That's Bonnie Lissick. She's the Auditor General of Ontario. We're grateful for your presence here at TVO tonight. Well, thank you very much for the invite. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.